<laughs> we, can, we can talk about it after the match. We can talk about it after the match. Yeah. Sub tournament, by the way. Okay. So Yez likes to taunt a lot with Ike. So I think Pia Chris is like giving him the the taunt, <laughs> the friendly pre-match taunt as well. Ike has some of the best taunts in the game, by the way. I agree. I agree. I actually do enjoy some of Ike's taunts. I do in I do watch and enjoy Ike's Aether, even though I don't like it when it happens to me. <laughs> but it's really good for Yes to understand that that's definitely a very strong tool in Ice Control. But wow, yes. <laughs> he's he died at 84. That was kind of funny too. He goes like, uh, like that third, third or second up there definitely wasn't true. But mm -hmm. when you're in such a scary position when Ike's un like under you like that, you don't want to just printly press anything or especially air dodge. So it's. I don't want to say like Pikachu's let it happen, but he kind of let it happen. Yeah, usually when you're getting juggled by an opponent, your best opportunity, no matter what your lighting option is, whether good or poor, is to honestly just try to retreat to the ledge so you can get the ledge invincibility and then pick an option there, rather than to continuously get juggled and eat a lot of percent and potentially lose the stock like Pika Chris did. Oh. Hey, the PK Thunder we'll actually it. able to get yes, and like you said, Strize will definitely take it. Nice. Yeah, PK Flash at the off stage to get to the ledge safely is so good. The opponents just force the shield a lot of times and you can just get back safely with Ness. A lot of times without even relying on using your up B or jump. It's kinda crazy. But yeah. there's the F tilt. He has in a really, really big lead right now. This eruption goes really far. Yeah. That's why he was charging it from from so far away from the ledge. Yeah, he timed it a little bit better, I think. He actually could have, uh, you know, got that recovery on this. Yeah, those are the two big changes to Ike in general. Like, his neutral air was able to combo into other options, but also, like, wow! Oh my God. And that's good, too, because he reads the out of shield option that, like, you would normally see from PK Chris or just a Nessane in general. Like, usually, now out of shield, PK, like, up be out of shield, or not up be out of shield, I'm so sorry. Then a shield forward out of shield. There's a lot of options that Ness can do out of shield. So for Yes to just charge up smash out of shield himself and then punish PK Chris and then also understanding the shield has already taken some damage and gotten smaller, it's really big. Yeah, yeah he goes for that quite a bit. Just to like, first, he, like you said, he put his shield with like that safe back air and then from there, he can get a shield poke, he can cover a roll, it jump. Like, the fear of getting like lowered shield from back air, Ike. It makes the up air, up smash even more effective. Yeah, especially you know? the way that Yez knows how to space it too. He knows when he can get it to be safe. Yeah, especially if he's at low percent. Like the punish he'll get most of the time isn't even gonna like be anything too crazy. Okay, uh, Pinker's trying to make something happen. Yez is not really falling for any of these nest setups right here. He'll take a little bit of hits, but there's the back throw. Okay, nest damage output insane, especially at low percents. So. PK Chris can still bring this back if he gets the right opening. Yeah. Of course, Yes, Yes knows that too, so he doesn't want to make it free. But Ooh, oh, he nice. went for the down air instead of okay. Yes might be able to go for the edge guard here. Nope, missed opportunity oh. once again. The forward tilt to read. Okay, we're not, we're not dead though. Not dead. Not dead. Oh my God, that was a very scary eruption for That's PK it. Chris. But I couldn't tell if that uh, either shield poked or what. But either way. Yes, man. He did not let the the comeback happen whatsoever. You know what's funny? Like people were talking about the Tony Z tank in the Tony Z tank said in the chat, but like it wasn't even really boring. <laughs> he kind of just played the matchup very well. You know what it is, guys? He played optimal is what he did. Because <laughs> if you do not play that matchup optimal, Luigi will grab you eventually, and Luigi will take away a lot of the momentum you had or punish you for overextending. You have to really play that matchup optimal with whatever character you go for. Yeah, you can SDI, but they can also follow your SDI if they're good. And I think it is percent based. Like, at some percents, it is true. But either way, yeah, the Luigi matchup 
for the for Tony's match. Like I just thought that was really good. I don't even think it took that long either. I think one of the stocks was like what less than ten seconds as soon as the match started. <laughs> I don't know. I know people just troll Sonic because it's Sonic online, but yeah. No, I think I think that was the good thing that like Tony did is like he understand like. Yeah, you gotta really camp the hell out of Luigi, dude. Like, <laughs> Tony has a point though. Not a lot of, I wouldn't say not all Luigi players because that's too general, but not a lot of Luigi players know how to follow SDI, to be fair. For maybe y'all, but like, since we live in SoCal where, you know, there's actual good Luigi players, we <laughs> we have to know this stuff. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> like when you go to a local and you fight like three Luigis in a row and they all know how to do the zero to death, <laughs> it changes you. Yeah, but anyway, dude. this is this is a uh, PK Chris's counter pick. Uh, yeah, I like FD actually, cause he was actually getting um a lot of platform extensions with his juggles. Yes, I mean, especially with the up airs. Right. So at least on FD, he doesn't have to worry about that as much. Yeah, no and you can see the way he's choosing to play. Like he wants to kind of bait Yes to jump early, and just you know cover his landings on FD. Like he doesn't have a platform to retreat to. And uh, Ike's recovery, or sorry, approaches are pretty linear as well. Yeah. It just comes down to like, can you punish Nair? Can you like bait out like the jumps, things like that? Yeah, it, it's kind of weird because it's not putting anything on Yez in general. It's just the Ike game plan is, isn't as strong as a lot of people think it is. It's more of like a somewhat of a flow chart. Like you have to understand he has Tomahawk grab, he has double jump Nair, he has Nair, back air. Those are usually his options that he can get into your opponent. So once you understand those things and you understand how he's going to come in, you can whiff Ooh. punish Nair or understand when Nair isn't safe for a follow-up and then just go ahead and punish Ike. A lot, of, a lot of little opportunities that you can look at Ike as a character and be like, okay, I should not fall for this anymore. Yeah. Yes is very good though. Like he knows yeah, he is, like he is. if if he sees an opponent start adapting how he approaches, he mixes up really well a lot of times. But yeah, I like this from PK Chris. I really like the PK flash stall off stage as well. That was a really good way to keep his recovery uh pretty tricky honestly. Yes was like disrespecting him pressing B off stage because he didn't want to challenge it. Alright, is fair string? Not a little bit too far, but still. He's getting like the little hits he needs to keep this lead. And he's just spacing very well too. Yeah. I honestly think the FD pick is working out very well for him. No, he's playing much more patient. He's getting yeah. like these hits that matter. Like he has starting to approach in some more punishable ways. Ooh. Even getting this SD out there too. Like we'll, we'll take it. Yeah. And like Three you said, right? like having no platforms, but also like he sees Yes over approaching. If you shield right, if you know when you can when it's not spaced or when he's not gonna go for an empty hop or uh, basically a double jump. He's, opportunity then you can punish Ike for that and then you can potentially just read him out like I said it's not yes it's just Ike's tools eventually do become a little bit of like a flow chart and once you have a good read on that you know what to avoid Ooh. wow he actually did not get punished for any of that not the B, not the missed F smash nothing yeah <laughs> he might just get the stock yeah I like that use of the PK fire and he knows on the too. Ether. Yeah, yeah he knows it only has armor on the start up here back air and that'll be it wow yeah, yeah that was, sorry PK that was Chris cool. That was very, very cool. The side magnet stall just to get the last hit of it. Combo to back here. Yeah, that was that was nice. Super, super good adaptation from the first game. Yeah. Yeah, I like MFA, actually. I like him in uh, Shutan the most. As far as all of our players go. Is he playing today? People keep talking about MFA. I don't know if this is like some some random guy in Definitely chat. The games would be like, yo, where's this person? Where's that person? I'm like, bro, they drowned in the either A, drowned in pools, or they didn't enter today. I'm sorry. Follow their Twitter. Yeah. Maybe maybe they'll make it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't see him. So, <laughs> I don't even think he's here. Or you he probably lost her. Anyway, game three. This is best two out of three. So this could be really good for PK Chris. I think beating uh, Yez, not only since he like won last week MSM from winners, like very dominantly against another Ness. Like that, that would be a big, big statement for PK Chris to go take this one 2-1 over Yez. Oh, 
Interesting Aether. Yeah, I actually like that reverse Aether edge guard from Ikes. Because they can just get the last hit of Aether without actually, you know, killing themselves for it. And it's so strong, like, even like the raw hit of it, you can just kill safely. So far looking really good for Yes though. I'm actually really surprised that PK Chris let him come back to this stage after. I was about to say the same thing. I would definitely yeah. not let this man have PS2. Okay. Trying to get some PK fire setups, but not getting too much damage right now. Yeah, this stage is actually not that bad for that strategy, like getting the PK fires off the platform, because it it comes at a very good angle for Ness. But yeah, Ike's Ike's punish game one. The stage with the platform is very scary. Okay. Scary indeed. All right, good for Yez. Sees that forward air literally on the platform. Doesn't want to waste time to probably go for an up air. Just kind of holds on the stage nice. here, and he will catch PK Chris going for an aerial yet again. What a stock yeah. lead for Yez. And like you said, right, going to PS2 may have not have been the wave, honestly, because this was a stage Yez was able to actually just carry this man out to up air city and take care yeah. of the stocks. And FD was definitely much better because he understood, like, okay, I can force Yez to approach me. I can catch that Aether with a PK fire here. But I don't know, Sage where platforms, I gets platform extensions and is able to do other crazy things with platforms. Uh, not in your best interest here, but yes, with a PK fire. And looking to get something here in the neutral. Double back air, no opportunities here, but he does catch the aerial with an up air. Adaptation right now for Yez looking very strong. If he got that double nair to work, it would have been. Potentially another stock for PK Chris. Yeah, no okay. double nair, but I do like that tomahawk. Wow. Game. He's able to just bait out PK Chris to just continuously hold shield, grab him for, and pretty much scare this man to be off what? the stage. Uh, wow. Definitely, okay. definitely miss him, but definitely miss him, but okay. Nice. Yeah, he's very patient when it comes to like the Etzel ledge trapping at, with Ike. Let's have in general, like, he just knows that space that he can cover with Ike's hitboxes when they're at the ledge. Oh, another Ether out of shield? Yeah, he's out of here. PK Chris trying to get things started with these aggressive aerials on shield, see if he can, you know, rack up the damage, but Yez is just, he's just shielding and getting that up B. He got two stocks like that already. Oh. Okay. Back here. Down here into the back there. There's another Aether. Yeah, the, that Aether, man, is so, so good. <laughs> that buff on Aether is one of the best that Ikes could have gotten. Honestly, yeah. Good space back air here. That, does, that doesn't even allow PK Chris to go for his back out of shield and punish Yes afterwards, too. That's how good space it was, too. Nice. First time I've actually seen him run up shield, but he was able to get the neutral here and put PK Chris off the stage. And I, he respects the PK cross, because usually that's what Ness wants you to do, is respect it, hold shield, walk away from it, give him time to come back onto the stage. Because if you do not respect it, you can get hit by it, and give Ness a lot more to work with. PK Chris, man, he's just struggling to land safely. Yes, is like sticking to him so closely. Yeah. No room to breathe oh, for the most grab. part. Oh, like get off me, though. though. Yeah, get off me, please. Yeah. Okay. Caught the late part of the back here. Caught him dropping shield, maybe going for a parry attempt. Yes. Might be sensing a little bit of the fear from PK Chris since he's so close to dying. Can't really make that many more mistakes. And he has to pick his next move very carefully. Great parry on that back air, but it was so well spaced that he couldn't even punish it after getting the parry. This doesn't have that much range uh, outside of like his forward air and air. But like if he goes for like a dash grab like that as shield versus like the max range back air, not easy to get.